So, what do we have today? I always write about Canon's countdown and how ideas become reality. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody and welcome to Aperture Chat. It is Wednesday. Wait, God, it's Wednesday. Sure it is. I am Tom. And I am Ryan. I like that he introduces himself this season. Uh, and today we're, we're going to start real quick with the whole Canon thing from Monday, which is... Disappointment. They, it's not disappointment. It just rebranded themselves. Yeah, I see. It's disappointment for all the fanboys who said, hey, it's going to be something awesome, and, and it's elation for everyone else who went, no, no, it's not. Well, yeah. It was very, very <laughs> obvious that wasn't going to be a product of any kind, <laughs> no. or at least a product that anybody cared about, really. Well, um, if your product is your brand, then maybe. I mean, I like the marketing thing. I just... The way that they went about their rebranding stuff, I feel, was a big misstep. I I, I think it was a bored marketing intern. <laughs> uh, well, no, that was somebody who was paid <laughs> millions of dollars of, to write that friggin' page. Gray marketing was paid a ton of money to to come up with the rebranding. It just was kind of silly the way they launched it. Like I didn't hear about that through any other venue other huh. than you. Like I yeah. didn't, and I'm very active in a lot of yeah. photography stuff. I, there, I mean, if I wasn't a Canon fanboy, we wouldn't have probably never would have talked about it. I didn't hear about that anywhere nobody picked up that story because it wasn't a story yeah exactly it was just an obnoxious counter on their website i don't understand what the whole point of that was like that if you're going to rebrand you need to have a little bit more fanfare than the stupid little counter on the thing and it, yeah well they had a really cool a minor a really cool flash animation when it finally came up or it might not be flash it might be something else but i just assumed it was flash you could spin the cube around and see the different sides of the cube how the different sides of the company yeah, all come together a, i mean it's a very corporate thing to do oh yeah it's like, like I'm just, I was kind of surprised that they didn't go a little more publicly commercially viable with their rebranding campaign. That and was the longest sort of like, hey, we're going to give you 48 hours to think about this. And then we're just going to say, hey, all our stuff's under one image now, or one logo now. Hey. That, that, that much changed. The Canon word has not changed. The font, the color, nothing about that changed. They just added the open cube for the inspiration that comes out of it or something i mean they did have, know, they had they, a really they had a really wordy explanation that didn't really mean much to me they did have a bit of a an image issue with their cinema line and their imaging line i think i think that that made a little bit of sense it, and a big part of the relaunch was the they were talking about a, a hollywood renaissance using the ef mount cinema cameras like that was one one whole side of the cube is just their cinema stuff yeah bringing the cinema stuff into Canon overall a little better. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense, but I am still sort of surprised how they went about that. Yeah. Oh, well. So, nothing big to talk about. Next. <laughs> oh, somebody doesn't want to talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. We covered that everything. That was the point. That was the point. That there's so, next. About. What's next? You have so pictures. The, the other basic concept, while we were thinking about things to talk about today, is the steps that generally happen when going from an idea to an actual execution to eventually a product that you're going to fulfill and sell or an end image. Um, Don't get a cat. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm good with pets. It's a whole different thing. I have a lot of pets in my life. He is a Twitter account now. Good for him. <laughs> because he's been on our podcast. So I, did, I wanted to make him a little thing that pops up like, like ours. Like, you know, what the, yours and mine pop up and has our Twitter handles. He needed a Twitter handle. So he has one. He's Aperture underscore cat. Well, the first part of this, this whole sort of overarching process thing, which is just we're going to do very quickly, and I kind of want to go into more detail at some point on my own, but we'll talk about the, the start of this is where the seeds for ideas come from. Um, and it can really be anything. I mean, it's a very, very personal thing of where this information comes from. Uh, in the case of this project, which I'm proofing in front of me, it's a long exposure project with arcades. Uh, this is a passion of a friend of ours who has a very a growing and a very, very cool arcade collection. Um, he, he had either heard something or had seen something at some point, which was some form of photography using like long exposures in arcades. So it was this kind of vague concept of something photography arcades, blah, blah. And then from there, you execute and turn that into whatever you want it to. That little seed can come from anywhere. I don't know if yep. you have any kind of interesting little seed stuff. I got this thing. Well, yeah, there's there's physical project stuff. 
this was a physical. This was, this was actually a big deal for when I was building it, because we were working on. Uh, I was working on Jesse's uh, exposure video, his, his his short that he did that actually made it to the film festival. So I'm kind of proud of the fact that I built this thing. But we needed one rolling shot. What was the rolling shot? It's where they're going between the doctor and the patient. Because they were always on two separate cameras and we didn't want a wide shot. We wanted to go from doctor. Like it, it starts on, mm. on her and then, but she's out of focus because the focus is already set for the patient. But it, it rolls across. It's, it was almost like a B-roll shot, but they are talking through it. And it, it, it spins around the room to face the other one, which is actually kind of cool because these have the little things yeah, they, and they I can turn it. And it, it, it can make, it can basically it just did this. I put the camera on here and then as it comes around, it goes whoop. And that's basically all it had to do. But we didn't have any way to make that smooth until I bought a skateboard, cut it up, and made pieces out of it. Now it's good for delivering me beer. Yeah, now it's good to still do stuff with. Oh, yeah. No, it's still very useful. I like not use it yet. So. I'd like to use it more. And I actually want to do a hyperlapse with it because I can actually set this up and move it very small amounts. That'd be weird for hyperlapse. I, I like feel like that. that'd, be, that'd be tough to be metered with. Like, hyperlapse, you have to kind of be very square with what you do. It depends on the style of hyperlapse. If you're doing it where you have to be... T if you're doing the one where you're always pointing at the same point, and as you move, that point stays in, then yes. But if you're doing one of the ones where it's actually motion hyperlapse, like, you're actually mm -hmm. trying to capture, like, a movement, then it, you don't. I know for me... Like, if you have you seen House of Cards? Yeah. The opening, like, they, those are hyperlapses, but they only... They don't focus on a point it's literally no, just a but if, if I'm gonna do a hyperlapse even moving through through a frame yeah I'm gonna be super metered about the direction I'm going mm -hmm. so I, like even my heavy tripod I would be very careful with it's it's a very preference thing well, I mean that, that's why I've got these they tighten down you can and you can literally just make mark I mean when I do it I'm gonna put marks on here that are exactly quarters all the way around the wheels and eighths on the yellow wheels like okay I'm going one mark one mark Hmm. I don't know. That's my plan. I need to actually do this at some point. But. Yeah, I mean that. that like, I mean that's a, that's a seed that went from filming something for a, a film project to yep. ideas for hyperlapse and into a hyperlapse at some point. Yeah, which like said, the seeds still... come from anywhere. Yeah, I mean I had no idea when I built that I was going to use it for a hyperlapse. When I started looking at it, I said, you know. That, that's going to be a base for a hyperlapse because I trust that with marks on it more than I trust myself moving my hmm. tripod an exact amount every time. Because I tried that. It came out like crap. It's one of those things that everybody sort of has a bank of and that it's important to keep open to suggestion in that way. Um, uh, there are some photographers who sort of, when they're, when they're venturing into a new project of some kind, they'll shut themselves off from like external stimulus of other photographers and what they're doing. Which I find to be completely insane. Um, yeah. If you're looking to do anything, really in any field, any anything, really anything, this goes outside of photography. Um, you need to be present in whatever you're doing. So you, there's no such thing as any f being isolated in what you're doing, whatever it is, whether that's art of any kind or whether that's photography, which is a bit of art and a bit of technical yep. skill. Or, I don't know, building a table or something. It doesn't really matter. If you're trying to reinvent the wheel, it's not. It's never going to work out for you. No. That's that's a very uh, important thing to think about. Yeah. Well, I, just... <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't try and reinvent the wheel. I just said, I, I saw, saw something I already had and said, ooh, that worked. Yeah, so like this 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 project in particular, um, the, the seed was that thing sort of would might be cool. Uh, from from what of sort of might be cool, it goes to well. Let's figure out. Just kind of when, once you have that the seed, you have to always keep those in bank. Like I always have ten things which I have thinking and kind of working, and that at some point I will try and execute or just let pass. Yeah, like the the barbed wire thing. There's there's a shot that I have a prop for that I I want to do, but it requires a lot of aspects to kind of align up, and it might take me a year or two. To yeah. shoot that, but once it's done, it'll be a very you know a long thought out process, which I've done in little increments over a long time. So everybody has their own process for that. And it's very, it's tough to describe, and it's tough for to people to teach how ideas go from start to finish in any sort of creative realm. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I mean that's that's 
along that line, is there anything you have to contribute of creative value? No, I'm not creative. Anything using the words of creative value? No, I'm not creative at all. You must have something. So I'm a portrait photographer. <laughs> no, I end up with a ton of ideas, and I put way too much planning into trying to execute them, and then end up just totally missing the mark because I can't get everything. I want to get everything in line on my timeline, timeline, and I don't always have that luxury, and mm. then I miss a lot of things because of it. So, like, like what? Like, what have you missed or not? Like, have you accomplished things improperly, or you just have not executed? No, all? I just haven't executed because I can't get everything to line up, and I'm too impatient to be like, okay, but I could reschedule this for later. I just end up giving up on it. Um, but when I get things to work, I get they work pretty well, so I'm pretty happy. That's one of those. That's that's what I mean by kind of having stuff sitting around and waiting. Yeah, is that there's always that's the problem. As soon as I have that seed. I start planning exactly how I want to do it, I, and then I, I put to, it all, and then I put it all together, and I say, "Okay, when this can happen, this can happen." But then I try and push it, and I try and push it, and then I end up killing it. You ever seen the scene in, in Tommy Boy when he's talking about the he's got his little pet, I mean, the monkey jo, I mean, Jojo the Circus Monkey Boy, and he's like, Ooh, and he's like, Aah! yeah, I kind of get like that. I get too excited, and then I kill it. So. That's, I mean, that, that's a like a learned creative process thing, which is really funny. And it goes back to, I mean, it's, it's sort of how I do everything is there's, there's an idea there and until it's flushed out completely, it's not even in the realm of execution. Oh, well, it's not even that it's flushed out completely. It's that it's within striking distance. So any, like these, these are long exposure arcades. Um, they're basically just shots of an arcade screen. But there's a lot more to it than that. And you and in the moment, a lot of that was solved just by doing it. But the pieces that I needed in order to even start this project were the, the location, the subjects, and really to see that there was a, a viable out for it. So I there's, tripod in. there's a reason, which <laughs> fucked me like ridiculously. <laughs> I have never I've never had to deal with a tripod head like that. I can see it in my pictures too that I'm pissed off at a tripod head for no reason. Um, I, it's, I, I ruminate on stuff until I'm ready to just complete it. That's, that's a big part of what I do. Um, see, I, I, I will let stuff sit until it's, it's ready to be just done. Yeah, I'm the total Whenever. reverse. I'm like, you know, go now, let's go do this. And so many times I get this great idea and I'm like, oh, but I need to go do it right now. And I can't go do it right now. And then I'm like, okay, I'll get to it later. And later never happens. It's opportunity. So like, yeah, I, I've shot landscape stuff for so long. Um, it's opportunity. So it's, you have to keep giving yourself the opportunity over and over again until you get something completed that you want or you didn't even expect to ever happen. So it's like anything you shoot at dawn or anything you shoot at sunset. And just because it's dawn, just because it's sunset doesn't mean you're going to ever do anything. Yeah. Especially with wildlife. But the more often you do it, eventually you'll work your way through getting what you want. Um, it's it's a very like personal thing. It's one of those things I like to try and articulate a question better for creative professionals to answer is that how they, what their mental process is in bringing something from the back of their mind into just let's do this with a camera or do this with a paintbrush or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it's... I mean, a lot of it has roots in art, and a lot of it is, like, how your brain processes a creative a creative impulse that you want to flush out in some way. See, and that, I think that's where you and I differ drastically, is you actually come from an art-type background. Do I, though? More so than I do. I, I, yeah. I come out of a kitchen. I'm, I'm a chef by training. And Which is it's, it's own... all about being creative, but being creative right fucking now, and get it out. Which I have to get out of that mindset. I have a hard time getting out of that mindset in photography. It's okay, strike while the iron's hot, do it right now. Oh, you missed it. Okay, wait for the next one. I don't I, I don't I have to rework the way I do my creative process to not do that with photography. Because photography doesn't have to be like that. Well, it doesn't that have mean, to be right this second. Some things do. I mean, obviously if it's like a sporting event, that only happens. Well, I mean it's working with it, it's working with that impulse is a thing. I, I have a hard time working yeah i'm very impulsive working to be everything's impulses but 
it's working to be a little bit more proactive towards accomplishing things, but I want the ability to do it the way I want to do it when it happens. So it's, it's about managing your, your enthusiasm towards a project versus your ability to actually complete it in your own head. Never mind, like actually technically complete it. It's be, making yourself ready to complete it. I know that sounds really weird and vague, but it's it's a tough it's a tough thing to manage for a lot of people. I think no, it really is. It's actually really tough to to manage. A lot of photography I see, I don't see people visualize what they're shooting. That's something that's only ever really learned through experience with photography is is visualizing what you're doing before you're pulling the trigger, and a lot of that. I mean. A lot of it is seeing the shutter, seeing, seeing through the viewfinder and actually knowing what that end picture is going to be like. But even more than that, it's before you ever even have a camera in your hand, visualizing what you're capable of and what the real world thing will look like in a, a sensor output. Um, See, I, I, I'm good at that when it comes to portraits, which is probably why I'm still good at and don't have problems doing portraits, but every other kind of photography messes with me. Because I've sat down before having someone come in the studio to shoot them and literally drawn on a chalkboard exactly what I, where I wanted to put everything, you know, no camera in hand. It was like, okay, it was like a Joe McNally video where it's, except on CD, instead of a whiteboard and making ugly scribbles, I made, you know, nice drawings on the chalkboard and said, okay, this shot, I want this light here and this light here and this reflector and this is where I'm putting the camera. This is where the person's going to sit, sit. And then I moved from there and, and kind of get it fluid from there because you could do that when you have a human subject. And then I'm like, okay, shot two, we're going to set up this way and we're going to work it. And that I can do because it's set it up and knock it down. Landscape is tough for me because it's not set up and knock it down. And wildlife is really tough for me because it's not set up and knock it down. It's go out there and sit there forever. <laughs> it's not sit. that I'm impatient because I, never I enjoy sit. that. I never sit for very long. And Any I, of the wildlife stuff I have is that, like I've maybe sat a place for a couple of hours. And that's not even a couple of hours. Now that I think about it. I mean, I, I don't really stay still when I mm. when I do do wildlife stuff. Is I'm, I'm going to walk around for a while, but yeah. I think the longest I've ever sat on one place was the moose. Like maybe an hour or so it was in Maine, and that was because I was talking to another photographer. I wasn't actually waiting for wildlife. We're just sitting there bullshitting because there wasn't anything to shoot. Um, I I think the part of this is where like the roots of how where you come from photography and the amount of time you've had to play in photography. Mm. that's I a lot of the stuff is I do especially I mean no matter what it is whether it's even commercial and root or it's a wedding or it's a, even portraits and all that kind of stuff it all slowly folds back into random stuff I've done at some point just screwing around with a camera it's it's play so it's it's this interesting it's expressing these little tricks and trials you've learned by yourself or just messing around or stuff you've seen other people mess around with and being able to express that into a, something that's beautiful you know it's like I've for years I um, when I had my first flash I had bought an SB 700 which is its own uh, just a strobe a decent decent mm -hmm. little speed light with that eventually I bought a couple of gels which I don't use very often right now it's I nothing I do commercially or for money I, I use gels very often just yeah. because it's I don't do portrait work a lot and even then with portrait work a lot of the portrait work I would do is not creative enough to warrant gels of any kind yeah um, but what I did what I've done with those gels and what I've done with that speed light is take stupid pictures of myself triple and eight thousand nine thousand exposures of just me opening the shutter and taking long exposure pops of myself hitting myself with a flash in a dark frame and changing the and then experimenting, changing the, the gel between a couple of shots. So there's a couple of red and a couple of blue and a couple of straight white of the same me in the frame. And it's, I, I did that probably six or seven times. Six or seven different occasions yeah. I've done that in just a dark place at three or four in the morning. Just screwing around. And it leads to stuff like this. This is like, these are going to be commercially viable posters. I'm going to make a set of posters out of these. And these are made... Um, Long exposure, open, open shutter, zooming a lens in. So this is something that you would never do, I don't think, from a place of like academic photography. 
technical photography, really. No, not because really. this is insane. This is like the chances of you doing this in a way that's appealing are low because you're grabbing an open camera pointed at a source of light and adjusting it, which means you're going to mess up a lot of your light. You're going to do a lot of things that don't work. But since I've been doing that for so long, I'm so I'm so comfortable with my camera and I'm so used to messing around. I can turn that into something that I find appealing and hopefully other people will pay money for. I don't know. It's no, those look like good posters to me. So I, they will be. It's what, the whole point of that is. I think experimentation outside of the realm of even worrying about good photography is really really important. And that's another thing that like doesn't have anything to do with photography is just the experimentation and kind of organic growth of whatever you do yeah that's 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 a really important thing no I, that's hugely important I, the, seriously no, <laughs> being able to, to experiment and expand is hugely important no matter what and being able to just tie that back over into doing your art not even if it's photography but being able to tie that back over into your art is what allows you to grow I was thinking about something else while you were talking, and, and uh, when I first started shooting, I shot on film, mm -hmm. and my mom wasn't too keen on me spending a ton of her money developing film, so I got really, really picky about taking shots, and they had to be like dead on perfect before I would do it, which took a little bit more planning. I didn't shoot from the hip very often. I I like started. Ever, I, I, I started. I, it started to get really expensive. I, I started shooting film too, but I, a lot of what I was doing on film was um, attempts at wildlife and birds and sort of landscape stuff. That's, I mean, photography as an addition to like hiking, basically. That's what I was, that's what I started doing. Um, not a ton, not anything crazy, but I, I mean, I would shoot film often enough. I don't remember a lot of it because that was a long time ago, but. I mean, I was, what, 10? The oldest, 11? I think yeah. my, my first digital camera was when I was like 12 or 13. I didn't have my first digital camera until the second time I went to college. What year did you get your first digital camera? Uh, 05? Yeah, I think mine was 02. It was a little point and shoot. Though. And it was so... My first digital was a Canon Rebel XT, which... Had an awesome silver body. It was kind of cool looking. Um, but it was a CF card. I think the biggest CF card I ever owned was like 512 meg. <laughs> I mean, it me was too. Little. I think me too. But it also was only like a 7 megapixel sensor. So 512 megs, you could still take a bunch of pictures. And I didn't shoot raw because I didn't know anything about shooting raw at the time or processing it. So I just shot JPEG. I was like, what oh, the hell is this other thing? I'd load it in my computer and have no, I would be like, I can't read these files. And then, so, uh, but even then I had to be kind of picky because I only had the one CF card. CF cards were expensive. So I would still be really picky about shooting stuff and be like, okay, got to get this perfect, got to get this perfect. Now wait, 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 crap, I missed it. Okay, let's try this again. Wait, 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 crap, I missed it. Okay, let's do it again. There's a bigger discussion here about um, the root of art being limitation and um, constricting factors mm -hmm. is, is the root of what makes art. Um, being able to self-impose that is really difficult. Uh, that's something that, whether they know it or not, a lot of photographers struggle with is that it's tough to be creative with lots and lots of possibilities. Um, I know I've, I've had my issues with that with the lenses I own. I don't own prime lenses. I don't have any really good prime lenses. Um, that gives you a very wide range of opportunity whenever you take your camera out of the bag. Yeah. That has its own problems. I mean, it's, it's, if you have to shoot something for a commercial end, you need to have every bit of opportunity, every bit of control you, you can get. But when your aim is more creative, is more creative, is more personal building, the, the things you can take away are more important like running a prime lens, like that's, that's one of the things that people suggest very often to people starting out photography is to run a lens. Let's pick a lens, leave everything else away, leave it in the car, and then go shoot that for a day. Take that, don't change the lens, don't use anything else, take that one lens for a day and get to know how that lens works. Doing that to yourself is tough when you do it for a living. You know, it's, it's 
Yeah. You know, if you're doing, you, obviously you wouldn't do it if you're for a paid shoot. Depends what it is, honestly, and that's that's part I of. I would never take options away from myself on a paid job. Well, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's like 85 little sidetracks, and I'd love, to, I'm going to do a little more getting into them myself. Um, it's, it's one of the reasons I like to talk to people a little more about photography. And it's one of those, you talk to everybody you can. Anytime you can, you can get to know somebody who does the same thing you do, you learn a little bit more about people's process and a little bit more about how people think. And okay. that does nothing but expand your, your ability. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I... There's a thousand things to talk about, but and the best thing you can do to talk about a thousand things is to leave us comments about the things you want to talk about, and uh, of course subscribe to our channel because we like subscribers and we talk about more stuff. Um, but yeah, seriously, just the whole idea of interacting with more people, I mean, that's half the reason we're doing this, is to interact with more people. Even though it's kind of right now a one-way conversation, although not entirely true, I have run into one of our subscribers in the wild. <laughs> He found you. He found me. That was the funny thing. But that, it, it, you can have a conversation that way, and then you, you, you know, well, we're both photographers. We're able to have that conversation. And that's the kind of things we're looking to do here. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if you want to see Ryan's pictures. Cause... Oh, yeah. There's going to be plenty of this. This is going to take me a month to do, but there's oh, going to yeah. be plenty of this. Yeah. I don't have a name for it yet. I, don't, I need to burn the clever. Think of a name to do this. Yes, I will. That that's one of those things I'm really good at because I take my time and yeah. ruminate on stuff for a while. Is naming. Right. Well, there is a total lunar eclipse tonight. No, for us, it's gonna be a fucking thunderstorm. Gonna be a thunderstorm. <laughs> well, that was gonna be my excuse to end the show. Now, what's that? We have to go take pictures of the lunar eclipse, but at six thirty in the morning, gonna be pictures of the storm that's coming through. All right, so. Ryan's going to go be creative, and I'm going to try and be creative and get frustrated with it, because that's the way I roll. Why? Well, I don't care. Why? 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 Ah, fuck. Uh, if you got any questions for us about being creative, or you want to tell us about your creative process, make sure you do that down in the comments section down below. And uh, if you want to follow this guy, you can find him on Twitter. I'll add his to all our information on the bottom now and uh, we'll see you later <laughs>